Hello friends, welcome to Incredible Physics. Hello guys, today we will discuss about the accelerations of the blocks which are connected just after cutting the strings and springs. Where we have connected three blocks with the help of strings and a spring here. So before finding the accelerations, we have to discuss about the properties of a string and a spring in that case. So if we cut one of the string, suppose we have cut string number one. Then its tension becomes zero instantly. On the other hand, the other two strings, string number two and string number three, change their force instantly. While if we talk about the springs, if we cut the spring number one, its force becomes zero instantly. While other two spring don't change their forces just after cutting any of the spring. So if we cut the spring number one, there will not be any change in the value of the forces of spring number two and three just after cutting. Now we have to discuss all the cases individually. So guys, first of all, we have to write all the value of the tensions in the strings here. From the FBD of M1, we can say that the tension experienced by string number one is T1 and that will equals to M1G. If we talk about tension T2 acting on M2 in upward direction, that will equal to the total downward external force and that is due to the gravity only, M2G and M3G, while the tension between M1 and M2 is internal for the system. So, T2 is M1 plus M2 into G. If we talk about T3, it will equal to M1 plus M2 plus M3 into G. These are the tensions of the strings initially when we have not cut any of the string here. Now we are going to consider the first case in which a string number one is cut. So when we cut the string number one, the tension in that string becomes zero instantly. Hence this is T1 which is zero. If we talk about T2, because we have cut the string and there is no tension in this string. So M2 will experience only M2G in downward direction and T2 in upward direction. So from the diagram of M2, we can say that T2 is M2G now and T3 will be M2 plus M3 into G. These are the new tensions of the string and we can say that there is no net force experienced by M2 and M3. So, A2 and A3 both are zero. While M1 is moving downward under gravity, so obviously it has an acceleration G in downward direction. Now, we consider the second case in which we are going to cut the string number two. A string two is cut. So, this time we are going cut to cut the string number two, so extension T2 becomes zero instantly. As we have discussed, other strings will also change their forces instantly. And we can see M2 and M1 block system is moving downward with the acceleration G. It is free to move under gravity. So obviously tension T1 should also be zero because if tension is not zero, M1 and M2 will move with a different acceleration. And that is not possible. The system is free to move under gravity. So obviously tension T1 is also zero. If we talk about tension T3, there is only one block in the system now, M3. And gravity force M3G is acting on it in downward direction and which is balanced by T3. So obviously T3 will equals to M3G. If we talk about the accelerations, A1 is equal to A2 and that is G downward. while a3 will be zero this time. Now we will discuss the third case in which we are going to cut the uppermost string. So if we cut the uppermost string, its tension becomes zero and uh, the whole system is moving under gravity in downward direction and every block has the same acceleration that is g downward. So a1 equal a2 equal a3 and this is equal to G downward. So obviously other tensions are also zero. So T3 is zero, T2 is zero and T1 is zero as well. 
So this was the case when we cut any of the string in our three block system and the accelerations obtained by the blocks. Now we have to discuss the system in which strings are replaced with the springs. And as we have discussed, spring have the different property. The spring which is cut gets a force zero instantly while at that instant other spring do not change their forces. So obviously the blocks which are directly connected with that spring which is going to cut will receive the acceleration while the other block which are not directly connected to the cutting spring will not achieve any type of acceleration. Now we have to discuss this case where all the blocks are connected with the spring. We can see there are three springs, one, two, three. Suppose this is one and this one is two, this one is three. Force experience Y. First spring is FS1. So we can see FS1 is acting in upward direction on M1 and it is acting on M2 in downward direction. If we talk about the force due to the spring number 2, FS2 will be in upward direction and uh, on M3 it is in downward direction. If we talk about the FS3, it is in upward direction on M3. While it is in downward direction, if we talk about the force on ceiling. So these are the forces applied by the spring initially. If we consider the blocks FBD, we can say that M1 is experiencing a force FS1 in upward direction and M1G in downward direction. So the forces applied by the springs are FS1 equals M1G. If we talk about FS2, we have to consider a system of M1 and M2 blocks where FS1 will be internal force and external will be M1G and M2G in downward direction and FS2 in upward direction. So obviously FS2 will equals to M1 plus M2G. Like this if we consider FS3 which is connected which is applied on M3 in upward direction and total downward force is the gravity force M1 plus M2 plus M3 into G. This will equal to FS3. So these are the initial forces applied by the spring. Now we are going to consider case number 1 where spring 1 is going to cut. So when we are going to cut the spring number 1, its force becomes 0 instantly. So FS1 is 0. While other springs have no change in their forces. So we can say that uh, M1 will not experience any spring force in upward direction. So it has the only force M1G in downward direction. So we can say that A1 is G downward. It is moving under gravity now. And uh, as we have discussed, FS2 and uh, FS3 have no change. So spring number 1 is connected with the M2 and M1 directly, which will receive the acceleration. So, if we talk about M2, M2 was experiencing a force FS1 in downward direction initially, which has become zero now. So, it will experience an upward force, net force FS1 in upward direction. And it will have an acceleration A2 equals FS1 divided by M2 in upward direction. The block will receive the acceleration just in the opposite direction in which its force is vanished. So initially M2 was experiencing a force FS1 in downward direction. If it becomes zero, it will experience a net force in upward direction having the same value FS1. So it has acceleration A2 equals FS1 divided by M2 or A2 equals M1G divided by M2 in upward direction. If we talk about A3, it is zero because it is experiencing no change in the forces just after cutting of, of the spring number one. Now guys, we have to consider the second case where spring number two is cut. So if spring number two is cut, obviously FS2 will become zero instantly while other two forces have no change in their forces. So we can say FS1 and FS3 have no change. A spring number 2 was connected with M3 and M2. So these are the blocks will which receive the acceleration. And uh, M1 will not receive any acceleration. It is 
at the acceleration 0. Although it looks awkward that if spring number 2 is cut, then y acceleration of m1 is 0. But we are talking about just after cutting the spring. After some time, the whole assembly of m1 and m2 will move down due to the gravitational force. But just after cutting of spring number 2, there is no change in spring 1. So, M1 will not experience any resultant force. So, at that instant, A1 is 0. If we talk about M2, M2 was experiencing a force Fs2 in upward direction initially. After cutting of a spring, it will experience a downward resultant force Fs2. So, we can say A2 is equals to Fs2 divided by M2. And uh, we know that the value of Fs2 is m1 plus m2g. And uh, it will be divided with m2. Because the resultant force is downward direction. So, this acceleration is also in downward direction. Now, if we talk about m3. m3 was experiencing a force Fs2 in downward direction initially. And that has become 0. So, it will experience Fs2 resultant force in upward direction. So, A3 will equals to Fs2 divided by M3 in upward direction or we can put the value of Fs2 as M1 plus M2g divided by M3 and that is in upward direction. So, this is the second case where we have cut the spring number 2. Now, guys, if we consider the last case that is spring 3 is cut. Then as we have discussed, Fs3 becomes 0 instantly and uh, Fs2 and Fs1 have no change. So, only M3 block was connected with this spring. So, it will have a non-zero acceleration just after cutting our spring while other two blocks will have a zero acceleration because they are not directly connected with this spring. So, just after cutting our spring, we can say that a1 and A2 both are 0, while if we talk about M3 block, it had a force Fs3 in upward direction initially, which has become 0 now. So, it will experience a downward resultant force Fs3 and acceleration A3 will equals to Fs3 divided by M3 or we can say it is M1 plus M2 plus M3 times G divided by M3 in downward direction. So, guys, these were the cases of the acceleration of the blocks which are connected with the help of strings and springs. I hope this concept is clear to you. If you like this video, please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon button so that the upcoming videos notification should be shown to you. And please share the videos. If you have any confusion, any doubt or you want any video on any another topic, please comment me. Thank you.